Many people think that made in China stands for inferior quality, so let's dig deeper for the causes. On August 29, the Jushian Hotel collapsed in Linfen City of Shanxi Province, and according to China's CCTV News, rescue efforts ended after 3 a.m. on August 30, with 57 people found in the rubble, 29 of whom were killed, 7 seriously injured, and 21 suffering minor injuries. At the time of the accident, the hotel was holding an 80-year-old birthday banquet for an elderly man, and many relatives and neighbors were gathering for dinner. In the past 10 years, the hotel underwent many expansions and renovations. The accident occurred in the hotel's banquet hall, which was originally a courtyard and can accommodate more than 100 people. While people are grieving for the casualties, the quality of the construction has also sparked discussion. It is still a common phenomenon in modern China, where the quality of construction is so poor that it is called tofu buildings. Why can't the so-called powerhouse, now known as the world's second largest economy, even guarantee the quality of its homes? The ancient Chinese buildings are usually very strong. Some of them have been in use for hundreds of years, or even thousands of years. Over the past 100 years, China has experienced many wars and turmoil, and the CCP has launched many political campaigns since its founding, destroying most of the ancient buildings, but we can also see from the surviving buildings that the ancients were very serious about their work. For example, the Chao family compound in Qi County, Shanxi province was built more than 200 years ago during the Qianlong period of the Qing dynasty and is still very sturdy. Juji village in Zhejiang province has more than 300 houses, most of which were built during the Ming and Qing dynasties more than 200 years ago, and the houses are still in use today. The civilian buildings are still very strong, not to mention the Forbidden City in Beijing built 600 years ago and the Great Wall that was built more than 400 years ago. The quality of bridges also varies greatly between ancient and modern times. We will name a few examples. The Huaiwa Daily announced that the main bridge of the Yuan Qiong Bridge, the controlling project of the Huai Shao Hung Railway, had been successfully completed two months ahead of schedule. A week later, on the morning of January 6, 2017, the girder of the Hunan Huai Xiaohung Railway's railroad section in Lanji Township unexpectedly collapsed, injuring two workers on site, one of whom suffered a dislocated hand and the other a minor scrape. According to incomplete statistics from International Financial Times in 2011 and 2012, a total of 19 bridges collapsed in mainland China, killing 12 and injuring 57 others. Of these, six bridges had been in operation for less than 15 years. In the five years from 2007 to 2012, a total of 37 bridges collapsed in China, including 13 bridges under construction which killed 182 people and injured 177, an average of 7.4 deadly bridges per year. On the other hand, the bridges built by the ancient Chinese are durable and long-lasting. The Zhaozhou Bridge, known as China's First Bridge, is located in the Xiao River in the south of Zhao County, Hebei Province. It was designed and built by Li Chun, a stonemason in the Sui Dynasty, and has been in use for 1400 years despite numerous wars, the destruction of the Cultural Revolution, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. Guangning Bridge is located in the Shaoxing city of Zhejiang province and was built in the southern Song dynasty, rebuilt in the Ming dynasty, and is the longest existing seven-folded side stone arch bridge in Shaoxing, having been in use for more than 300 years. Why is the construction of houses and bridges built more solid and durable in times when technology and equipment are lacking than in modern times? Because the ancient Chinese believed in gods and the moral quality of the people was maintained at a much higher level than today. Chinese people generally believe that there are spirits three feet above the head as people work. God is watching. 
Therefore, they were rigorous and serious in their work. The high moral standards at that time also motivated them to put their best effort into everything they do with respect to people and nature as the core values of everyone in society. In ancient China, people respected God and believed in God, and many of them believed in religions such as Taoism and Buddhism. People generally believe that people who do good deeds and accumulate virtue go to heaven, and those who do too many bad deeds go to hell. Even those who do not believe in religion, they generally believe that God is watching over all good deeds and bad deeds, which is why they say, God's eyes are like lightning. In addition, the ancient Chinese had strong family discipline, and each family had its own ancestral family law and family rules, and if the offspring did not abide by them, they were considered to be unfilial and were punished. Therefore, in ancient China, religion, traditional moral codes, and family education maintained the moral level of the entire society at a relatively high level. Ancient China was a civilized and courteous country where people respected each other. After the founding of the Chinese Communist Party in 1949, it forced people to give up their belief in God through successive campaigns. Lai Xiaomin, the former chairman of China Huarong Asset Management Company Limited, which is controlled by China's Ministry of Finance, has fallen from grace due to corruption. This year, Chinese media revealed that Lai had three tons of cash in his house, about 260 million RMB, more than 100 luxury apartments, 100 mistresses, numerous luxury cars, and many other assets such as high-end watches, gold, paintings, etc., this is representative of the many corrupt officials in China. It should be noted that almost all Chinese officials are corrupt, and those who have been stripped of power are mostly due to failure in political struggles, not because of the consequence of corruption. Under the Chinese Communist Party, the moral bottom line of the entire society is rapidly declining. Because people don't believe in God anymore, they will do bad things without fear of consequence. Even baby formula dares to add toxic and harmful chemicals to it. In 2008, it was found that many infants were suffering from kidney stones after consuming San Lu milk powder, which was found to contain melamine and cyanuric acid. According to China's Ministry of Health, by the end of 2008, a cumulative total of 296,000 children with kidney stones caused by consumption of San Lu milk powder had been reported nationwide, and 52,898 were hospitalized and treated. The San Lu incident caused an international outcry, and 27 countries, including Canada, the United Kingdom, and Italy, immediately announced a ban on the import of Chinese dairy products and related products. In July 2014, Peking University's China Social Science Survey Center published China's Livelihood Development Report 2014, led by Professor Xie Yu, which shows that in 1995, the Gini coefficient of net household wealth in China was 0 0.45. In 2002, it was 0 0.55. In 2012, it reached 0 0.73. The report believes that more than 30% of China's social wealth is currently occupied by the top 1% of households, while the bottom 25% of households own only 10% of social wealth. This year, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang said that 100 million people in China earn less than 1,000 RMB a month.
Even in this environment, there are still some people in China with an undivided conscience, guardians of traditional morality, give people hope.